Hi there, my name is Simon Joseph. I'm an intern with the Pittsburgh Parks Conservancy, and today I'd like to give you a tour of the Frick Environmental Center. But first, I'd like to give you a short history of Frick Park. Frick Park was founded in 1909 when Henry Frick donated 151 acres at the request of his daughter Helen Frick, who wanted her father to establish a place for children in the heavily industrialized city to enjoy and appreciate nature. Today, this area is about 115 acres of managed land known as Frick Woods. There were to be no roads going through the park, and today there is only one road leading up to its entrance. Since then, the city has added additional acreage, and the park is now approximately 600 acres. Now that you've learned about and seen a little bit of Frick Park, I think it's time that we move on to the Frick Environmental Center. The Frick Environmental Center started as a nature museum which was located on a house on Beechwood Boulevard and it was first funded by Helen Frick in the 1930s. This was replaced then in the late 1970s with a new nature museum which unfortunately burned down in 2002. After that, PPC partnered with the city to plan the new site. In 2009, building and landscape design began with construction beginning on August 4th, 2014, exactly 12 years after the fire destroyed the old Frick Environmental Center. The new Frick Environmental Center finally opened to the public on September 10th, 2016. When you walk in the front gate of Frick Park, on the left you'll see 588 solar panels that provide 100% of the Environmental Center's power and it also acts as a parking lot. Inside the Environmental Center, there are three levels. The lower level provides storage and it is where the HVAC and electrical systems for the Environmental Center are housed. The middle level is the office, which is the main office space, a conference room, and two think tanks. The top level is where you'll find reception, the living room, and a large classroom that can be split into two smaller classrooms, and if you go outside you'll find an additional outdoor classroom. The building opposite the Environmental Center is the barn, which houses the water capture systems and two additional bathrooms. While the Environmental Center looks pretty cool on the outside, I think the most interesting part is on the inside. The Frick Environmental Center was constructed with a particular focus on sustainability, which is why the FEC has two sustainability certifications, a LEED Platinum certification and the Living Building Challenge certification. While LEED Platinum is pretty impressive, I think what's most impressive is the Living Building Challenge certification. The Living Building Challenge requires that projects are restorative, which means that the site is raised to a higher state with the project, and there are seven focus areas, called petals, that the project must meet to be certified. We're going to break those down now. The first petal is Site. The project must curb sprawl, protect sensitive ecology like wetlands and old growth forests via offsets and by using gray or brown fields. The project must also reduce transportation impacts and expand protected ecological areas as an offset for the impact of development. The FEC was built on top of the old site, which was a gray field, and the 195 trees that were cleared were replaced with 195 native trees and nearly 7,000 plantings. These trees and plantings are projected to absorb over 6 million gallons of water and over 410,000 pounds of CO2 over the first 50 years. The project is also conveniently close to public transportation routes and it's in the middle of three neighborhoods. PPC is also encouraging staff to use bikes to get to work. The second pedal is water. Both the solar panels and the parking lot provide a good example of developed sustainable water management. This means that man-made infrastructure is used to capture and store water. There are gutters along the sides of the solar panels that run down into two 500 gallon rain barrels. Captured water is also stored in a 1500 gallon cistern near the barn and a 15,000 gallon cistern underground. If you're having a hard time picturing 15,000 gallons, look at this conveniently placed picture. This captured water is used around the building and landscape. The parking area near the front entrance uses a permeable surface, which allows water to seep underground and be returned at a natural rate. The parking lot under the solar panels is paved with impervious asphalt, so water is captured at underground infiltration areas where the water can be held before being returned. The environmental center itself is an example of ecological sustainable water management. The building's roof is curved, so rainwater runs into a rain veil on the north face of the building. The water then runs into a rain ravine, which empties into a constructed ecological wetland 
which also handles overflow from the cistern and fountain. As per code, potable water must be municipal. The environmental center still has to compensate for the volume of water captured to be net zero, so they use low flow and sensor operated fixtures. Non-potable water is treated before storage. A BRAE or Bray rainwater harvesting system that is located in the barn pumps water through a multimedia filter, a UV purifier, and adds a dye to indicate that it's non-potable. Maximum expected water use is about 330 gallons per day. Black water is treated via an on-site buried treatment train system, which is pumped into a drip irrigation field a short distance from the woods. The next pedal is energy. The Frick Environmental Center uses about 40% less energy than another building of its size. This is thanks to the solar panels above the parking lot that generate 100% of the Environmental Center's power. The building produces around 153,000 kilowatt hours per year, but only consumes about 142,000. The FEC is connected to the grid which means that on cloudy days, the FEC can pull energy from the grid, but on sunny days, it can give energy back to the grid, keeping electricity generation net zero. The HVAC system in the environmental center is also meant to be as energy efficient as possible, and it uses geothermal heating. It's not exactly geothermal heating, which is directly using ground heat, but it's heated with radiant flooring via a ground source heat pump. There are 16 wells dug 525 feet deep in front of the environmental center, and the HVAC system utilizes a closed loop of glycol running from the wells into the building. The ground is a constant 55 degrees Fahrenheit, which is warm in the winter and cool in the summer. The glycol is pulled up from the wells into the building's heat pumps at this constant 55 degrees. There, the temperature is either raised or lowered, and it's run throughout the building. The radiant floor heating means that the heated glycol runs through the floor and warms the rooms. For cooling, the glycol is pumped into a fan coil unit that produces cool air. There is also a three-phase cooling system. The first phase is passive natural, where windows can be opened because the outdoor temperature and humidity are suitable. This is normally between 60 and 80 degrees Fahrenheit. There's a green light system which indicates to occupants to open a window, which then triggers automatic windows throughout the building. The second phase is active natural. Open windows are okay, but additional air exchange is needed because CO2 is high. A mechanical fan turns on automatically and air is exhausted out at the top of the stair tower and at the outdoor classroom. The third phase is mechanical with energy recovery, which is used when the outdoor conditions are not suitable for natural ventilation. This essentially acts as a conventional HVAC system, but with an energy recovery unit in the basement. Instead of just exhausting the air that has already been circulated through the building, we reuse its heat in the winter, or it can be a heat sink in the summer, to either pre-warm or pre-cool the intake air. Therefore, the machines don't have to work as hard. At night, the building will flush by taking outside air in and allowing hot air to escape via high locations or heat rises to precondition the building. There are 11 different zones in the environmental center, each of which can be individually heated and cooled, keeping energy from being wasted on empty rooms. For lighting, the environmental center uses fluorescent LED lighting and occupancy and ambient light sensors so that energy isn't wasted on lighting rooms that people aren't in. The next pedal is health. The health pedal requires that there is a civilized environment, meaning plenty of daylight and fresh air, healthy air, which means that there are controls and testing to protect the air we breathe, and biophilia which nurtures humans' connection to nature. All occupiable spaces, like workspaces, have abundant light and operable windows, allowing for fresh air and sunlight to enter the building. There are also many spaces where the outdoors can be accessed from the inside of the building, including the walkway and the outdoor classroom on the top floor. In terms of healthy air, there is obviously no smoking at all in city parks. There is also monitoring of temperature, humidity, and CO2, as well as respirable particles and the total concentration of VOCs in the air. The Environmental Center features quite a few biophilic design elements, including the rain veil and natural materials like wood that connect people with nature, the curved shapes of the building and tree-like columns that simulate natural features, plenty of natural light and outdoor spaces that are available to visitors, and the landscape features situating the building between man-made and natural landscapes, allowing for the form of the building to be more defined. The materials pedal is the most interesting and challenging in my opinion. Materials for the Environmental Center had to go through a rigorous vetting process. Specific materials with red list chemicals that affect human and ecosystem health had to be avoided. Things like asbestos, neoprene, lead, petrochemical fertilizers and pesticides, and PVC were all excluded from construction. The Environmental Center used Forest Stewardship Council certified wood, meaning it was sourced from forests that are sustainably and responsibly managed or from reclaimed sources. The FEC also used third-party certified standards for stone and rock, and salvaged wood and stone from the old site were also used. Materials also had to be sustainably sourced and contribute to the regional economy. Materials had to be sourced from manufacturers within a 500 to 20,000 kilometer radius, based on the type of material and how heavy it was. 
more dense and heavier materials had to be sourced closer to the construction site than other smaller materials like technology and wiring. The FEC also has on-site composting and recycling, as well as a plan for current and future purchasing to minimize waste. The next pedal is equity. The purpose of the equity pedal is to foster a truly inclusive sense of community that is just and equitable for all people. As the first free and publicly owned living building, the Frick Environmental Center strives to be a beacon of inclusivity for all people, Pittsburghers and visitors alike. The Environmental Center is bordered by multiple neighborhoods and is easily accessible by bike, car, and public transportation. The park is free to everyone and has accessibility features so anyone can come and enjoy the natural landscape. The focus of the Environmental Center and its staff is to foster all people's connection to nature, not restrict access to it. The final pedal of the Living Building Challenge is beauty. The design of the Environmental Center is intended to promote awe, curiosity, and love for the natural world. Community input was gathered to help define features that they wanted, which includes the famous fountain which was redesigned to reduce water and energy impacts while preserving a historic feature of Frick Park. At Frick Park and the Frick Environmental Center, all people are welcome, celebrated, and restored. Thank you for watching this virtual tour of the Frick Environmental Center. The Environmental Center is truly an incredible feat of sustainability, and I hope you have a chance to visit this amazing building and the wonderful park that surrounds it. Mm -hmm.